Forerunner. Yeah. See, this is what happens when you have too many cars in one event. See, I hey. Never do me. this again, ever. That's if PR it. ever comes to you again, right. say no. That's right. Okay. I had it's okay. In the previous interview, someone kept calling it a tundra. And I'm just like, focus on the hat. Focus on the hat. <laughs> <laughs> See, behind the scenes, the show. Right. This is what we have to go through That's to make right. this happen. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're going to have to get into some things here. I want to cover uh -huh. some of the differences here, uh -huh. practical, meaning uh -huh. what does it really mean for this thing. Uh -huh. And then we want to get into, you've got some learning now because you've got the ICE truck now in the market already since you and I last spoke. That's true. So tell me what's going on here that's different, that's kind of beyond just like name, rank, and serial number of this is a hybrid and integrated that's starter true. generator motor. Well, you know, when we started and we, we, we first had the conversation back in Hawaii, which was the global reveal, we talked about the eight different grades, right? And then uh, we came back and we had another chance to, to speak again in, in Malibu when we were really uh, ready to launch and give the dynamic drive event for what we would, what you call the, the ICE, or in, in this particular case, our I4 series, our, our, our primary core tran, uh, engine transmission combination. And now this is really the I4 Max, and it's the grades that we're launching there. And what's really changed here is we wanted to make sure and we talked a little bit about this, we have a lot of offerings and we have to launch two different manufacturing facilities and we need to ramp those up. So we were very strategic in how we wanted to develop the quality of this truck and make sure that we had a successful launch. So we began with uh, obviously the most, uh, I'll say popular, the, the double cabs with the core motor, the core powertrain, the iForce powertrain. Uh, we launched the second plant and then Let we brought Let me just interject in. there. When you yeah. say most popular, yeah. Give me a number, like what percentage of Tacoma sales in total are double cabs? Are double cabs? You're, you're probably looking at about 80%, uh, oh, probably a little bit north difference. of 80%. Yeah, actually, I think that's really common throughout the rest of the industry. Um, the extra cabs are there, uh, and there's certainly, um, uh, certainly a desire for those, and we wanted to make sure that we maintained it. But if you start to go with the double cab, and then that includes both the short deck and long deck, but it's it's probably 80% of, you know, of the population mm. uh, of what we sell. Um, and, and it's it's because again in the I think in the mid-sized truck for anybody who really is focused on you know passenger or, or rear passenger then you're going to need to have that those extra doors for that purpose. It's it's really the people that are you know focused on the, um, the extra cab that really like mm. it for its I'll say its work purpose right. You mm -hmm. get the longer bed but still the short wheelbase mm. uh, and then you know you're you're de-emphasizing people and more you know carrying and storing of goods than you are people. Okay, so let's get back to this one. Yep, so this Practical is the final installment. Practical differences here, uh, yeah. above the name, rank, and serial number. Yep, yeah, so really what this is all about is this is our, our, our iForce Max. Uh, we're bringing it out in sport, off-road, uh, our limited grade, which is really important because we're really trying to reimagine limited on Tacoma, right? It's probably the one area in the truck that we've sort of under-indexed in in terms of the number of sales and, and interest, and we really want to differentiate it. It's sort of the gentleman's off-roader. It's going to be a little bit more refined. It's a little bit more focused on comfort. Uh, we're offering it for the first time ever with uh, active variable suspension as well as uh, full-time four-wheel drive. That means drive. adjustable dampers. That's exactly right. They're, they're, they're actually changing, right, as we, we go down the road. You can start from comfort all the way up to sport, and then... Uh, they're they're adjustable through the now. If I'm reading range. this, what you're saying correctly, mm -hmm. it's kind of like the underdog. Is that because you didn't really put much in that offering, or people just didn't want that? Well, I think historically, it's really not what it's really not the the, the core ethos of, of Tacoma, right? Tacoma is really active outdoor adventure. Uh, most of where we sell is in the SR5 and the TRD grade. Like what was the rationale in trying to invest more into the limited? Well, you know, it's really just. Taking a look across the entire uh, population of, of the customer segment in the in the midsize area, and so again, uh, we, we really wanted to to address with the extra cab that mm. entry level value conscious customer. Mm. We do very well, uh, and we were you know is defend and protect our, our core area, which is SR5. I had mentioned TRD Sport and off road, um, and then this one is just that area where you know we're selling maybe three to five percent. We said, well, is there? more opportunity in that segment in the answer or that 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 sub segment of the market and, the, and we felt like the answer was yes and so we, then we said okay then what do we need to do to adjust the product to make sure that we're a little bit uh, you know we're, we're we're attracting that particular customer or we're, in, we're enticing them with what the product offering is and that's where we really went to differentiate this by giving a lot of the amenities you know power running uh, you know sideboards we've got you know the again full-time four-wheel drive uh, top of the class uh, acoustic package the ABS a number of different things not just like you know a sticker and tire package or a wheel and tire and, and trim package it was a lot more including the actual me mechanics in, in the hardware that we're putting in to the into the mm -hmm. truck uh, as well as how we're tuning that and sort of sort of moving that a little bit away from the off-road and a little bit more toward the on-road performance 
um, again, it's sort of a, we'll say the gentleman's off-roader, if you will, because... But for the, what I'm understanding here, it's very much an experiment on your end. There isn't a like bit specific of data, people coming to you and saying, we've got to have a fancy Tacoma. Well, there, there, was, there was certainly a voice in the segment that came to us and said, you know, we love the limited, but, you know, what am I getting, you know, what's the value proposition beyond, yeah. for example, a well-appointed um, TRD, for example, sport. Yeah. And so that's where we really want to say, okay, we really need to differentiate this a bit. And so that's where we have used those, mm. uh, say, additional upgrades and those additional uh, performance and hardware tuning mm. um, to really deliver that uh, in, a, in a more, I'll say, complete package. So that brings us back to really the powertrain here. So we can yes. do that on the Limited, the, uh, the iForce Max? Uh, the iForce Max is available on the Limited, yes, that's right. And so um, one of the things that's really important about that is, you know, that's another thing, premium powertrain, right? You know, premium efficiency in that truck, you're going to get the, the full-time four-wheel drive with really, really great efficiency in, in that particular vehicle. So uh, what people love about it is it's just, it's, it's just got all the torque and the power that they need. And then it's a very, very refined on-road uh, drive experience. Because of those adjustable dampers. Uh, largely because of that, that's right. And then, of course, you know, some of the acoustic you know, attenuation that we do as well to make sure that it's, you know, it's, it's, so you, it's a pleasure. There's an engineer experience. tuning that one differently. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Different target. So when you and Mike sat down and you're like, okay, we're going to mm -hmm. do a hybrid here, we're going away from the V6. Yep. You did the, hi you did the hybrid here in a different way. We discussed we that in many episodes. You guys can check those sure. out. But what, where the rubber meets the road, mm -hmm. what were you looking for in terms of, not numbers, but in terms of usability on the road out of having that integrated starter generator motor. There. Yeah, it's a really good question because, you know, people say hybrid and fortunately because of our, you know, our really great experience and, and, and all the product that we've been doing for so many years, you know, the first thing is efficiency. You know, hopefully most people think Prius, right? I mean, that was really the, the vehicle mm -hmm. that brought hybrid to the world in mass scale. Um, in this particular vehicle, we're really thinking more along performance hybrid as opposed to efficiency-based hybrid. Uh, in the truck segment, right, we have um, the, we're obviously having to, to reduce some of the, the displacement of, of the engines to, to do better in the, in the areas of emissions, et cetera. Supplementing of it or augmenting that with a turbo, which is great. It does produce really great power pretty quickly. 1700 RPM, we're at peak power. The great part about this is we can still go back now and even add more, and we can ramp that up even faster. How do you do that? Do you have adjustable vanes in the turbo? Like, what are you doing? With that? Well, for the turbo in and of itself, we're using the twin scroll, right? Okay. So that means that we're we're getting basically whether it's the the one and four, the two and three, depending on the on the cylinders, we're we're mm -hmm. still getting that blast of exhaust, and we're we're spinning that up really quick. We're also really careful about how we size that turbo. So you know, sometimes you can go with a larger turbo, you get bigger top end speed, uh, horsepower, for example, but mm -hmm. you're giving up maybe response. So well, our Porsche people know this. That, that's from that's right. Many years that's right. back in the day. That's exactly right. Yes. And, Legendary. And this was a really kind of, I'll say, this was a little bit of a balance that we wanted to run. Yeah. Um, and in reality, the situation in, in a performance you know, sports car, that's very different application than, for example, everyday driving of, of a truck that's going to be doing more, I'll say, work-related activity. So we wanted to make sure that performance, you know, we, we see peak horsepower, you know, at the top end of the RPM band, but most people don't live there every day, right? And if you're on the track, that's a different story. But so what we're trying to do here with this motor is make sure that in that we have that really good drive force in that everyday drive mm -hmm. range. When we're doing things like towing, when we're doing things like off-roading, and then the one motor is so great because now we can augment that, right? Mm -hmm. So we can just instantaneous torque, uh, basically ramp that torque up super fast, and then we can obviously it becomes you know additive when we, we're getting peak torque at the with the uh, with the turbo and in, in the L4, and then on the back end we start to lose some of the efficiency on the turbo. Well, once again we can augment that that uh, that torque and horsepower there. So well. there's another point in the power band that's coming in. That's exactly right. In okay. the front and in the back. So last time you and I spoke, this was all theoretical. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, we were in this like cave in this research that's and development a, facility. Right. Like they put, literally put me in a basement. I didn't that, know I'd get out of there alive. Well, that's 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 engineering. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that I've driven the two. Yeah. So a little feedback for you. Please. Um, the new Tacoma, mm -hmm. and know that I've got a lot of experience with Toyota products. Brother has a 4Runner. Okay. Uh, our shop truck is a Tundra. Gotcha. Okay. Um, anyway, the, t the Tacoma with the four-cylinder, it's a little bit more power. Sure. But it still, to me, speaks or reads as Tacoma when you're rolling down the road. Okay. I have had the opportunity now to drive this in a trailer. Okay. And I beat the crap out of it on this crazy fast... <laughs> Off-road track you got this yeah. is a Voigt, Voigt Ranch, a yep. Voigt Ranch. Yep. Yep. It's, a, it's, a, it's a motocross place. Yeah, it was. And you guys mm -hmm. widened them to put the trucks on there. Yep. This thing was badass. Oh, thanks. But the most, and I'm telling you this again because I love you. I'm mm -hmm. telling you this because it now has a different personality. 
Good. That's what I'm noticing from the electric motor in this thing. Yeah, yeah. It was more immediate in mm -hmm. the way it delivers power, especially when I was trying to like, this jumps. Okay, right. so I jumped your truck. Oh my goodness. I didn't scratch it, oh I jumped it. Oh, I can't believe it. But we're getting to the point where <laughs> I jump, and you know you, you come down and you're trying to, you want to continue at that pace. Right. Torque was instantaneous. Awesome. So that I think was the big difference here. Cool. Yeah, and, and it's you, you picked up on something that's important. It's the immediacy and the ability to get right back into it, right? Yeah. So we're not waiting for any turbos to spool. Yeah. Uh, you have that instantaneous torque power. And then what I hope you also may have noticed is, is we really spent a lot of time making sure you blended. And so ideally, you know, you don't really know when the motor's there and when no, it's and when the, when the turbo's coming on. Um, and so that sort of handoff between yeah. the two has been really important in the, also the total integration not just acceleration, but also on deceleration, because that's sometimes the other area where you, you kind of can, can get tripped up, right? Where you feel the motor jump out or the regen, you know, kind of back out, and then you feel the, the corner brakes come in. Spent a lot of time in tuning the system for that, but you really hit it, and I think the, the where people really are gonna feel it, it's gonna be that punch that you get. You're rolling 15 to say 40 miles an hour, you're getting onto the, you know, the expressway in Los Angeles and you wanna mm -hmm. goose it, and I mean, it's just, it's there and the response is, is, is instantaneous. You know, interesting strategic feedback here, for you. What you guys don't know, this event was, I call it Toyota Palooza. Okay. Um, okay. It was this truck, it was Land Cruiser, sure. it was Forerunner Reveal, mm -hmm. it was Crown, Signia, and, and Camry. Yeah. And I don't think you did this by design, mm -hmm. but so you have the regular, the two motor hybrid, sure. which sure. is what you consider a hybrid synergy drive Toyota, mm -hmm. and then this is the one motor. Right. So I literally would drive them back to back, okay. and you notice how big of a difference. Okay. I sure. don't think that was the design of this program, yeah. but it was more stark contrast. You notice that here. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a great point. Um, obviously, the really exciting part for our customers, regardless of whether you're in the truck market or, or where you yeah. fall in for product, we've got a lot of great product that's coming out and honestly you mentioned everybody is super busy so this is a great chance to bring everybody together we got the twisty windy hills yeah. where you can go right on road we got this really cool off-road park where we can do all the the go fast and, and and rock crawling and all the different sort of off-road environments so but the nice piece was to be able to showcase all the different choices we have for our customer I mean, we're excited about this of course this is my don't this do is my five bread cars in two days ever again Never <laughs> don't ever do that again okay. i'll take that under advisement yeah. i'll make sure the people uh yes, the people please. who are in charge know yeah. Um, but now, okay, let, let, let's switch gears a little bit. Sure. You actually now have the regular one. We do. The ICE, the regular gas, no That's hybrid, right. in the market now a couple months. We have, yeah. What kind of learning are you getting so far? Yeah, so it's still a little bit early on the learning curve. We've got about 19, just a little, uh, I think, a little over 19,000 units that have been retailed. Um, so by Tacoma standards, that's, you know, kind of a, a slow start to the year, but obviously we're ramping all those all manufacturing up. Is that a production thing? Are you just kind of well, supply it's, it's, constrained? Well, not, not really. It's more of just a, you know, it, we're, you got to step, right? We stopped making the old trucks. We're starting to make the new trucks. You, you, you bring them on in volume. As we mentioned, we launched one plant, then we launched the second plant. Now we're launching another model. So the, we wanted to do it in Where's stages. Where's the second plant? Um, so we have our, uh, our Guanajuato plant, which is in central Mexico, uh, just outside of Cretro. I think you said that you've been Maybe there. Maybe one day we will do a pay-per-view event. There. Me and Sheldon, <laughs> and Sheldon will tell you about the story of his dedication to get red paint okay. on the car that involved an, un yeah. an unfortunate flight yeah. back from Querétaro. Yeah. Anyway, go on. That, that's a story for another time, for sure, and uh, might have to be PG-13. But um, anyway, no, we're, we're down there. Um, that was the, the new plant that we built. Uh, we transitioned from Texas to there as we brought uh, the new generation Tundra and Sequoia down to our, our San Antonio plant. Um, our, our BC California plant, which are, I said it's a BC, our Baja Mexico plant, yeah. literally an hour across the border from where we are right now. Yeah. Um, that's been building Tacomas you know, for, for a long time. Before they built the actual Tacomas, they were building the, the deck beds for us. So um, long, long, rich history in building Tacomas Is that a there. Toyota plant or is that a contract? Uh, no, those are uh, both Toyota plants. Toyota yep. plants. Yeah, Toyota wholly owned, that's and right. And is it a, like, ICE comes from Querétaro and hybrid comes from here, or is it just a mix? Um, so both plants build um, our, our double cabs. Um, and so we build primarily double cabs out of both short deck, long deck out of the, the BC plant. Um, the, the, the plant in, in Guanajuato, our GT plant, just for short, how we call it, uh, that one's building a lot of our variations. So that one will have our extra cabs, that one will have yeah. our hybrid power trains. Uh, they build our manual transmissions out of there as well. So uh, a little bit, that, that's more of our variation. It's our newest plant. Um, and so um, they have, they're very well set up in terms of flexibility mm -hmm. to have the, the, different, uh, the different options that we have. Are you getting any feedback from the market 
mm -hmm. from the 19,000 units out there. Yeah. You're learning about things that are happening, or you're going to upgrade some bits and do because I know there's running changes at, yeah. with every car manufacturer. Yeah, you know th there are right now. We're getting um, you know I think people are are largely um, excited about the product rolling out. Um, it's been mostly positive feedback that we're getting. Uh, we're certainly getting you know the 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 response that we wanted to hear about the drivability improvements we made about the seating positions that we wanted to make. We're getting some feedback you know about some of the technology right. You know we've heard. Uh, um, uh, an issue or two that people have had, you know, utilizing the digital key and making sure they understand how that works with our, our Toyota app and how it interfaces with the truck. Uh, part of that is, is I think, a little bit of a, a, an educational learning curve, right, as we're learning new technologies and we need mm -hmm. to do a better job of making sure our customers understand how those work. Um, overall, from a performance standpoint of view, uh, you know, I think, especially coming from the third generation, um, you really can experience the difference in drive force. And that's that's what a lot of our folks really said that, you know, that was their, their biggest issue uh, in, in the previous gen in truck and so we're really closely monitoring we entered exit carplay in our in our um in our new multimedia which is something again we heard from the customers that they you know that they didn't like we wanted to see that improved um so yeah we're, we're getting some of that and we're taking back you know some of the the other one like the eight inch display some folks have said you know the the, the, the dial okay. knob is too small so from the from the little to the big we're, we're trying to listen we're trying to collect it figure it out and then you know chart our course for what we need to do to can you know toyota's about continuous improvement okay. we're going to continue to evolve this product to make sure that we're listening to what our customers say so two things yeah another piece of feedback and then we'll Please. get into something that's I think very important um, again had the opportunity to drive both trucks now a couple of them, including the trail hunter okay um, the seating position mm -hmm. drastically different okay the basic Tacoma mm -hmm. it still has the ghosts of Tacoma's past okay. that's not really a bad thing but if you've driven a Tacoma you know what I'm talking about okay this I thought Again, love you, but sure. I thought the isodynamic seat with okay. the shock absorbers, like a truck, an sure. 18 wheeler, mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of a gimmick. Okay. But now yeah. that I've used it, mm -hmm. it's not actually about that. Okay. It's about it changes the entire seating position okay. and sight picture. Okay. And the changes the overall interaction with the vehicle. Okay, good to know. I need to spend some time on the road. We'll talk more about that. Okay. But here, mm -hmm. I think what we gotta do mm -hmm. is turn this around to the audience. Okay. And sure. here's why. All right. We brought up, or you brought up, that mm -hmm. you've already made some running changes to the truck. There For are sure. 19,000 units out there. Yeah. I think what we should do is turn around to the audience. Sure. Specifically for folks who are previous gen as well as current gen mm -hmm. Tacoma owners, what are you experiencing? Absolutely. And give us some feedback in the comments below because Sheldon, I'm not just saying this, he actually does read your comments. Yeah, no, it's, you, you only get better by, by listening to what people love. You know, what do you want to double down on, and, yeah. and what, what don't you like? Speaking right, of getting better, better, we got a big announcement with this guy in a couple of months, so okay. we'll have to talk about this. <laughs> all right, all right, so right. comments below, That's uh, or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, as per usual, you and I never have enough time together. This one was a little bit more rushed because we're squeezing in between things. Mm -hmm. But there's two things I want to put a pin in for our next conversation. Right on. Uh, number one, now that I've had some wheel time with this, the TRD Pro, mm -hmm. as well as the Trail Hunter, now I kind of understand the differences more. Okay. And I want to have a more theoretical discussion because I'm now more confused okay. than I was before. All right. And the second thing, he's going to share his input because he had some hand in the development of the Forerunner, from what I remember. That's right, yeah. So, Maurizio Sada, he's the chief engineer there, but when uh, we were working together in the early phase to do a little bit of the uh, the concept development. And so, uh, we can talk all about that. It'll be a fun conversation, and, and we can talk about how Forerunner and Tacoma, what they shared together, and how okay. uh, the, the team in Japan really evolved the truck and is what you got a chance to see today. Okay, so we're going to do that conversation in July when I go back up to their f facility in Michigan, which is next to a funny farm. It, it, that is it, the truth. That, that, is, that is true. That's right. When they're done with us, they plan us over He literally right. works in an asylum. I'm not That's making right. that up. Uh, <laughs> if you found this fascinating, check out my first discussion about reliability and the turbo on the Tacoma with this gentleman here. You can check out that episode here. Until I see you in the next episode, bish beta. Thank you, sir.